The study of climate change is no longer limited to laboratories and scientists. Citizen scientists are helping with research, including a look back through centuries-old ships' logbooks. Rachel Becker, environment reporter for CalMatters and formerly a reporter for The Verge, joined me recently via Skype from Sacramento for more on what these handwritten histories are telling us. It's pretty big. So far, about uh, 200 logbooks have been transcribed so far. And these are people who are actually tasked with keeping track of the weather on a daily basis. These ships, so there'd be somebody who had to go test the water temperature, the air temperature, the barometric pressure, and write it all down. Mm -hmm. So these logbooks are coming from all sorts of different uh, ships. There were merchant ships traveling from the UK and Scandinavia down to trade with New Zealand and Australia. There were exploration vessels traveling all the way down to Antarctica. There were whaling ships hunting whales in the waters around New Zealand and Australia all the way down to Antarctica. And they were marking down these measurements, you know, through sometimes horrendous conditions um, to write down, you know, temperatures, air pressure, the things that are key, you know, to sailors, but also now are useful to scientists who want to know what the climate was like 100, 150 years ago. Now, they haven't mapped or they haven't sort of translated all these or digitized all these books yet, but have they found anything interesting so far from some of the observations? So they're still processing the data. Um, one thing that they'd like to do, um, I was speaking with a scientist at New Zealand's National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research named Petra Pierce, who's part of this project. And um, one of the goals she told me is to basically be able to tie extreme impacts like flooding to what the weather was doing at the time. Maybe there was a storm or something strange going on uh, with the weather. Um, and so that's one goal. Another goal is to ground uh, climate models in measurements from the past. And so if these models can kind of ground truth their projections with past what we know was actually going on historically, um, they can potentially better predict what's going to happen in the future. So those are some long-term goals. Right now, they're still processing the data, but they have had some interesting observations of icebergs further north in warmer water than they'd maybe expect, mm. uh, observations of wildlife and the aurora. Um, and Pierce, the scientist I spoke with, told me that one of the really interesting logbooks, uh, several of the interesting logbooks that that have been analyzed came from Robert Falcon Scott's expedition to Antarctica in the early 20th century. Um, and these uh, explorers raced to the South Pole, and on their way back, they died. Uh, but they were keeping their measurements right up until the end. Mm. Uh, and Pierce told me that you can see the measurements get more sporadic and infrequent. Um, and eventually, the logbooks were rescued. And it's, she told me it was very inspiring to see these people doing what they could and taking the measurements they could and taking the observations they could, you know, right up until they couldn't anymore. Yeah. So also a, a question about the process, if you're a citizen scientist, what about sort of the quality control in this? What if I think it's a seven? Am I the only person that's ever going to see that? And then are we going to have bad data? That's a great question. Uh, so they have multiple people transcribe each entry uh, to weed out the outliers. So, you know, maybe it really was a four, but I thought it was a seven. But if everybody else thinks it's a four, then my data will get weeded out so they don't accidentally get propagated to the climate models. Right. And uh, what's their end goal? Once they get all these books finished, um, what are they hoping to find? They're hoping to fill in these gaps in the historical weather record for the waters surrounding New Zealand, you know, because to understand how the climate has changed over the long term, you need a starting point. You need to know what the climate was doing in the past. Yeah. All right. Rachel Becker from CalMatters, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me here.